welcome. We will have uh, lecture 16 for the course corrosion failures and analysis. And topic what we discuss, we continue our discussion on de-alloying and or selective leaching. Now, in the last lecture at the end of last lecture, we have shown some examples of de-alloying and while analyzing the mechanism. Uh, we said that there could be possibility of both mechanisms are working. So, in one case first few layers zinc dissolves in case of de leaving copper and then finally, it is basically the second mechanism which becomes uh, predominating uh, mechanism or dominating mechanism where both dissolves uh, either in case of copper zinc, copper and zinc both dissolve, in case of silver zinc, silver and zinc both dissolve and later on zinc stays back, silver deposits back in case of copper silver zinc alloy or copper deposits back in case of copper zinc alloy. So, that way we develop that nice porous structure on the surface and where ligaments are either copper in case of copper zinc and in case of silver zinc it is a silver, but remember that it may not be possible to get to 100 percent uh, copper or 100 percent zinc for that reason we have to also have some special requirements to be to be met in the solution, but definitely we would get close to around 90 to 95 97 percent uh, purity of the noble element in that particular couple. So, it might also happen in case of uh, 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 in case of uh, multi component systems remember in case of multi component system this is also possible. Okay. Uh, for example, we have seen in our work that multi component uh, zirconium based alloys, we got to see that when there was palladium or platinum, we did see that platinum and palladium uh, are actually enriching on the surface leaving uh, uh, copper zinc uh, behind. Okay. In case of uh, 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 zirconium copper system, copper enrichment might, poss might be possible leaving the zirconium uh, behind. Okay. So, I will show you so those data in a little while, but coming back to the mechanism part uh, mechanism of de-alloying, it has a strong and there are two processes one is noble metal stays back and active metal dissolves and second part is both noble and active elements or metal dissolve and noble metal ion redeposits back, redeposit back. So, these are the two processes and those two process can processes can go on parallelly. Now, coming to uh, a mechanism, so it has a strong correlation that even if we try to see that uh, a noble metal stays back or noble metal dissolves, it has a strong correlation with pore bay diagram. Pore bay diagram, fine. Now, if we try to look at the pore bay diagram in case of silver copper system, because we have test, we have done that study in our lab. So, we will talk about silver sorry silver zinc system and let us see whether we can have this situation that silver indeed would 
stay back or wood deposits back silver iron if it is forming on the surface and zinc wood dissolves. Okay. So, in order to do that so let us go to uh, the PPT again uh, if I see this PPT. So, this particular PPT we have seen in the last lecture if we see that we could see that we started with uh, silver 50 zinc 50 that was the alloy uh, powder we took and then finally, we got 100 percent silver over the entire powder the entire zinc 50 percent zinc content has dissolved okay, in the form of ions in the solution and that solution was 2 normal HCl and 0 0.005 molar AgNO3. So, AgNO3 was added you know in the beginning when we are we were doing this particular operation at 2 in 2 normal HCl uh, 100 percent silver was not obtained there still there was little bit of zinc left out some places we could see around 2 percent zinc some cases we could see 1 percent some cases we could see 3 percent zinc uh, were left out even after we went up to 48 hours of dealloying in that same solution fine. So, then we thought that we should add uh, silver nitrate solution which will increase the silver activity silver ion activity in the solution which will allow uh, zinc to further come out and everything would become pure silver, okay. but still it is acidic. This is important information remember this is very very important information still it is acidic and that is what would see that the correlation with pore bed diagram of silver and zinc fine. So, let us see the next page. Okay. So, now this page let us look at. Okay. So, now before doing dealloying uh, actually we did a free solu free uh, corrosion dealloying free corrosion dealloying is basically we have made that solution and in that solution we dip the powder okay, and we have uh, uh, churned it little bit because uh, if the powder is accumulate if powder accumulate accumulates uh, at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the beaker uh, there could be possible that the outer layer of that powder accumulated powder or the heap of powder uh, would get dealloyed, but the center part of the powder uh, heap may not get dialyzed so that is what, what we did we actually uh, uh, churned it. How did we churn? We put it on a, on a magnetic platform magnetic starter okay. so that magnetic starter would give us a kind of uh, uh, churning effect okay. and we had put a small iron uh, uh, that magnet uh, uh, I think just a minute let me just recall no it was basically fish bubble we have used you know uh, if you see aquarium uh, we have a bubbler bubbler used this is a small pump which is used which actually uh, gives bubble formation uh, which allows bubble formation in the uh, in the water and that is what it looks beautiful in the aquarium okay fish aquarium small household means fish aquarium there we have a bubbler we call it bubbler fish bubbler bubble bu bu we where bubble forms uh, by sending uh, air into the solution. So, that leaves the bubble and that bubble formation will have a little bit of churning in the in the solution. Okay. So, that is what we did and in the that is what uh, we did and we saw result and in the beginning we saw that uh, uh, in, in the beginning we saw that silver enrichment is taking place. In order to understand that we what we did we measured the OCP open circuit potential. If we go back to our earlier lectures Okay, so, where electrochemistry has been talked about the electrochemistry related to corrosion has been talked about you would see that OCP is open circuit potential when you take a metal you dip in a dip in an electrolyte you measure the potential of that electrolyte with time at some point of time it will stabilize and that time you are actually not sending any current from outside. Okay, so, this is open circuit condition circuit is not closed in that particular potential stat. So, that potential we call it open circuit potential. So, that is what it is OPC OCP. Okay. Now, in HCl 2 normal HCl we took another composition this is the composition we took uh, silver 25 zinc 75 
still we got 100 percent uh, silver. So, this is a silver uh, a zinc enriched alloy, uh, but still we got uh, 100 percent uh, silver uh, nanoporous uh, particles, those each particle became nanoporous. So, their entire zinc uh, actually go out, it goes out into the solution uh, in the form of ions. So, we measured the OCP of those powders. How did we do it? We, to, we, we, we what we did? We made a, uh, a pallet out of it. That powder, we pressed it, mechanically pressed it and we made a pallet. So, that pallet looked like this. So, this is this alloy powder pallet and then this disc was placed in potentiostat to measure the OCP. Okay. Even though there are porosity, but still we could have that OCP measurement. And even after 3500 seconds, okay, more than uh, or close to around uh, uh, 1 hour. Okay. So, that even after that we could see it is a very stable OCP. Okay. So, that means OCP is uh, with respect to standard hydrogen electrode. Uh, we initially measured in terms of uh, with reference to standard calomel electrode and then converted that potential into standard hydrogen electrode. Okay. I hope you will be able to know what is the uh, conversion. Let us say if it is a standard calomel electrode and if it is a uh, standard hydrogen electrode, this is standard calomel electrode, okay, standard hydrogen electrode and standard hydrogen electrode 0 point is here and with reference to standard hydrogen electrode, the standard calomel electrode that potential it is basically around 0.241 volt. Okay. So, this voltage in standard calomel electrode is measured with reference to standard hydrogen electrode. So, when we measure some voltage with respect to standard calomel electrode, this voltage becomes 0, the reference value would become this. Okay. So, that is what if some value becomes let us say this potential is minus 0.4 for 1 volt. So, that means that potential if you measure with reference to standard hydrogen electrode. So, you just corresponding point. So, this would become uh, uh, minus 0 0.241. Okay. Uh, just a minute, let me see uh, uh, this is for 1. No, it would become 200. Okay, because the entire gap is this gap would be uh, 0 0.441 minus minus plus 0 0.241, it becomes minus 200. Sorry, this is not the potential minus 200. Okay, and then uh, you have actually consume this much of potential. So, this is uh, uh, from here this gap is uh, 400 minus 0 0.441 volt this gap, this gap is minus 0 0.441 because with respect to saturated calomel electrode this becomes my reference uh, potential. And now, with reference to standard hydrogen electrode if we would like to measure we know already to reach to that 0 reference potential with respect to standard calomel electrode is actually plus 0 0.241 volt uh, with reference to standard hydrogen electrode. So, the remaining potential would be 200 minus 200 volt. So, if you add this two part, so then it would become again, again it would become minus 0 0.441. So, in terms of with reference to uh, if I try to measure this particular potential with reference to standard calomel electrode. So, that potential if it is E, let us say this potential is E. So, this E would be in terms of standard calomel electrode, it would be minus 0 0.441 volt, but if we try to measure with respect to standard hydrogen electrode, it would become minus 0 0.200 volt. Okay. So, that is the way we can convert one from one scale to another. Okay. So, now coming to uh, here, so we measured that particular potential of that pallet 
with reference to standard calomel electrode and then we converted everything in terms of standard hydrogen electrode. Why we had to convert everything? Because the in the book uh, the pore bay diagram is measured with reference to standard hydrogen electrode. Okay. So, now this is the potential of the alloy, this is the potential of the alloy in that particular solution with that pH. Okay. Now, what we did we had taken pore bay diagram from uh, the standard books and that pore bay diagram in that silver pore bay diagram and in zinc pore bay diagram we uh, actually plotted that potential. Okay. And we also know the pH of the solution what we are using which is 2 normal uh, HCl and you could see that this potential which is around minus 2 to minus 4 volt around that volt. So, that is coming uh, here. Okay. Now, this is also coming in the pH in the in the in the uh, uh, zinc pore bay diagram here. So, this is zinc pore bay diagram, this is silver pore bay diagram. Now, if I see the potential here, okay, that OCP value that is the potential of that particular alloy, that potential and the pH also we have measured. So, pH is around 0 0.2 is the pH of that solution okay. and with, with that we have done from the by the by measuring it for with, a, with the help of a pH meter. So, now this is crossing here this arrow if you see this arrow it is crossing here and now where it crosses it is crossing here that crossing point lies in the silver zone in case of pore bay diagram. So, in case of zinc pore bay diagram, silver pore bay diagram. So, if I try to draw the left part or left part of it, it is here. So, then it is so this. So, this is this is A g, this is A g plus plus, this is A g 2 O fine. Now, we are having it here at this portion which is the silver zone which is immunity zone immunity zone. So, now if we have that particular for example, if we take a silver silver uh, block if you dip it in acid with this condition if the potential you have silver potential you have taken forcefully to this particular potential minus 0 point, my point 0 point minus 0 0.2 volt with reference to standard hydrogen electrode it will lie here. So, silver will not dissolve it will remain immune. Now, the alloy experience the same potential and that potential with reference to the zinc pore bay diagram let us see where it lies. So, here it lies so this is the uh, uh, OCP of that potential or the free potential of that particular alloy silver 25 zinc 75 and it is in weight percent remember and the pH we know which is 0.2 and that point is lying here. Okay. So, that is let us see where it is lying it is lying in the zinc plus plus ion region and this zone is called corrosion zone fine. So, now this particular point if we take this alloy 2.2 normal HCl and if we see their position relative position with reference to the pH and potential of that particular alloy it is lying in the corrosion zone of zinc and it is lying in the immune zone of silver. So, that means silver should not dissolve and zinc should dissolve. Okay. So, that is what zinc dissolves silver stays back, but finally of course, the actual mechanism starts happening where both dissolves and immediately silver deposits back is a basically a kind of mono layer ion formation or few layers of mono that ions having uh, silver ion as well as zinc ion, but immediately silver deposits back and zinc stays back in the solution, but that staying back also has a relation that it is actually that potential is always lying in the corrosion zone of zinc pore bay diagram, but silver one is lying in the 
immune zone of Bobet diagram. So, that is the beautiful relation. Okay. Now, another important thing is for example, the first monolayer is having let us say this is the first layer and the another layer is forming. So, this is the first layer that is having silver enrichment, silver enrichment. Now, once the silver enrichment happens, one might have a query that this alloy initially it was silver is 25 percent. Now, once the first set of dealloying happens, the first monolayer dealloying happens, it is becoming enriching with silver. So, that means, this concentration might go to uh, A g on the first monolayer A g uh, let us say uh, it becomes 70 uh, zinc 30. So, that might happen. Now, if silver enriches the alloy itself become uh, nobler. Okay. So, how to understand that which one is noble, which one is active? The noble means its potential reduction potential goes up. So, that means this OCP will go up. Okay. So, now OCP go up means it will try to reach to this level as it is going towards closer to that particular uh, uh, situation that silver is enriching. Now, interesting point is even if OCP goes out of that section, then the second mechanism would still be there because silver has a higher reduction ability in compared to zinc when it we have both. Okay. So, that means silver deposits back continuously and zinc continuously comes out in the form of ions. So, that means you can see that there is a strong relation uh, uh, for the dealloying with the Pobe diagram of both the elements that is noble and active elements and that is very clear that you have to just do that experiment. If you take any alloy system where one is noble, one is active, okay, you take Pobe diagram of both the elements okay, and now you measure the OCP of that particular alloy, that OCP and also the pH of that solution where you are dipping and that time if you see that cross section point the pH and potential cross section point if it is lying in you will see that the element which goes out in the solution that particular cross section point the pH and potential would lie in that active zone or the corrosion zone of active element and it will lie in the immune zone of the noble element this particular phenomena will be true. Okay. Now, coming to the point that if somehow we change the pH, what would happen? Okay. The potential, if we change the pH, let us say we have made pH to a very large level and that OCP we have measured. You know. This particular alloy, same we have made a pallet and then we have dipped it in NaOH solution okay, and uh, which was uh, uh, 1 molar NaOH. If you see this is the 1 molar NaOH we have dipped, you can say this is 1 molar NaOH. And we saw that the your uh, uh, that OCP value of that particular alloy is around this particular potential okay, minus around minus 1 volt with reference to standard hydrogen electrode. And we have also measured the pH of 1 molar NaOH with the help of a pH beta and that pH came out to be 11.8. So, 11.8. Now, we what we did we tried to again plot that OCP which is minus 1 volt in NaOH of that alloy and the pH of that NaOH solution and we could see. So, in case of silver Pobe diagram it is lying in the silver zone, but in case of zinc Pobe diagram it is lying in the zinc oxide zone. Okay. So, that means, you would we should expect that silver would stay back and zinc oxide should form. Fine. Now, when you have a solution, this is a solution in that solution initially let us say this is a silver zinc alloy. Okay. From that zinc is dissolving. So, this is full of zinc plus plus zinc plus plus ions and it is becoming uh, interconnected uh, silver. 
Okay. Now, this zinc ion we thought that let us recover that zinc ion, okay, whether it is possible uh, in the form of some useful product. Now, we took the powder out or rather filter it out and that we took solution and that solution now you do not have any uh, silver the silver particle which is porous nanoporous silver particle, it is only zinc plus plus and then what we did we put NaOH solution. Okay, till it reaches to the level of pH of 11.8 and interestingly we got zinc oxide nanoparticle, okay, zinc oxide nanoparticle. Let us see whether zinc oxide nanoparticle has been obtained, you see this. Okay. Now, there we after we have done the dealloying part, we took the nanoporous silver particles out, we took the solution remaining solution, we started mixing NaOH solution in that. So, first uh, NaOH will neutralize HCl and then after that we keep on adding NaOH so that the pH level goes to 11.8 and then we could see that zinc oxide started forming. So, these are all zinc oxide nanoparticles, the particle size is of the order of around 60 to 54 to 60 nanometer. So, those are pure zinc oxide nanoparticles. So, what I mean to say that through that relation with the Pobe diagram, so now we must have wondered that why we are trying to learn Pobe diagram in electrochemistry. The Pobe diagram can explain many of the uh, phenomena, the way it has explained the preferential dissolution of zinc and making of silver nanopar silver nanoporous particles and then finally we could recover that zinc in the form of zinc oxide and zinc oxide has got many uses okay so that part is different but at least we could recover those zinc ions otherwise otherwise you just throw it out okay so that's what i'm telling this pobe diagram learning pobe diagram is very very important while learning any of the corrosion phenomena that can relate the practical situations. Okay. We will talk about this Pobe diagram, influence of Pobe diagram as the time passes on and as we see many other examples like this. Okay. So, let us stop here and uh, uh, next lecture we will touch upon this particular aspect, we will take some of more practical examples and try to see what are the protection routes uh, of, of de-alloying. Now, coming to another aspects, if you could recall, if you could recall that while talking about uh, galvanic corrosion, we uh, said that uh, galvanic corrosion sometimes it becomes good aspects, it is not always bad. We could see two examples, one is sacrificial protection, okay, where the zinc magnesium dissolve and uh, it becomes, uh, 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 it become, it protects the uh, steel. Okay. And another example we show dry cell battery. In case of dry cell battery, zinc casing dissolves and electrocathode reactions happens on the center uh, graphite uh, or carbon electrode and zinc dissolution happens around that uh, zinc casing and we get some potential output which is 1.1 volt and those are the dry cells. So, those are actually examples of advantage of, uh, advantage of galvanic effect which is the advantage of corrosion. Now, here also you would see in the next class also we would see that de-alloying is a, is a kind of tool to prepare many exotic porous materials. We could make porous catalyst by using this de-alloying process. Okay. So, the corrosion phenomena is not all the time bad that can be useful for making some useful product. Okay. So, that is what uh, I mean that uh, corrosion is not bad all the time. Uh, this is a kind of uh, uh, eye opener that it can be useful in many instances. We will also look at those issues as the time passes on, as we go into uh, learn, go, uh, go and learn this subject more and more. Okay. So, let us stop here. Thank you.